Um, right now, the only proven highly and it's highly effective treatment is uh, regular injections in the eye with a so-called anti-VEGF drug. And there's three that are uh, comparably effective uh, to accomplish this. In the very near future, we think we might have other medicines, but most of those in the pipeline are also injected in the eye. And injections, it sounds scary, but it's really very well tolerated and very low risk. At the very first encounter, when you first tell the patient, hey, this is treated with the medicine I need to inject in the eye here in the office, you do get some, you know, the, the shock reaction. Um, uh, although public awareness of that is, is helping because they know of other people getting them sometimes and that helps. But if they don't, sure, it's a scary uh, notion. And uh, the first thing I'll say is it doesn't hurt, it's well tolerated, and it's very low risk. And you'll see it's over pretty quickly too. Once you break the ice and do your first injection, they do come to realize uh, it's not as involved or as um, uncomfortable. You can do it in such a way they don't see it coming. So um, uh, it's it's pretty straightforward for the for the patients. I've I've had very 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 few patients ever had have that much pushback, uh, and I don't think I've had anyone that's ever really uh, not had the injection when indicated. It's infection, that's what we worry about. Um, serious but rare. We're talking less than one in 2,000, one in 3,000. So the risk of an infection is very low. There are competent retina people all over the country and even worldwide, and I don't think you're really too far from a retina specialist that can deliver these treatments. Uh, there are probably some very rural parts of the United States where they may have to travel a couple hours, uh, maybe even more, presume, you know, in, in some locations. But um, in general, um, there's probably enough people doing it that it's not too much of a trick. It's changed a lot. Uh, in fact, I wouldn't, I don't think I've ever would have envisioned um, in my career uh, treating macular degeneration as effectively as we can do now and and also I wouldn't have predicted that injections are as well tolerated as they are you know before anti-VEGF therapy we would do occasional injections in the eye infections and so forth but it was a one-time thing there was the time where uh, during the AIDS epidemic where there was a lot of CMB retinitis we were doing regular injections and at that time you know you, you got feedback that it was relatively well tolerated but here we're talking about injections over what could be many years and uh, now we can look back over a 10-year time frame uh, with patients getting treatments that long and we're talking 60 70 80 plus injections and uh, the eye tolerates it remarkably well never would have predicted that one The thrust of the teaching is, you know, where we are now and how to get, be get the best results, what we have available to us from a diagnostic and therapeutic standpoint. And we often do talk about, you know, the unmet need, what we can do better, and what's in the pipeline to try to uh, accomplish those goals of, of better outcomes. We can do better, you know, there's no doubt about it, there are unmet needs. Uh, it is nice to have the historic perspective because it's an amazing story. Uh, what AMD outcomes and you know, with the current treatments is is truly leagues, orders of magnitude better and different compared to what we had 10 or 10 more years ago. And every lecture I give on this topic, I always provide that historic perspective because I'm still uh, amazed at what has been uh, able to be accomplished in such a short time. Well, I think the future is still bright in terms of making more progress, that's for sure. Uh, unmet need is, is still, we don't cure the disease, we control it. We could control it better. We could get better vision for a good number of our patients too. So knowing that, um, there's a whole host of targets um, and therapeutics that are in testing right now, phase one, two, and three, uh, that look promising. Anti-VEGF therapy is not gonna go away. Um, direct blockage of VEGF, the way we do it now, is probably what we're gonna do for at least the next five years or so in one form or another. Uh, we may have different delivery platforms, something that lasts longer, that would be nice. But um, I think it's also likely we're going to add on a therapeutic in addition to anti-VEGF that works via a different mechanism that will complement what anti-VEGF can do.